Hello, this is Anton over at thehyperadvisor.com. Uh, I'm going to run through a setup of the HP Virtual SAN appliance with VMware Workstation. Um, basically, you're going to have to download the media uh, for the VSA. I'm not going to go into that. But after you get the media downloaded, you will have the one for the to install the VSA and basically you're just going to double click on the the auto run dot exe this is going to run through a setup you're going to hit agree and when you click on the install VSA there's going to be a wizard to walk you through downloading the actual VSA um, files that are needed for for either OVF or the actual VMDKs and VMX um, files to import that into uh, VMware. So you'll see right here I've already done that part so the the, the virtual machine files and everything is are here for me to use. Um, there's also the the OVF or the appliance so that you can import this into uh, vSphere. But I'm going to use the VSA here with the files already um, exported and I'm going to copy that into my my virtual machine location for workstation. Now, once that is finished copy and uh, finished and copied, I'm going to change the name of the folder just so I can stay sane and, and actually know what it is that I'm putting over here. You see, I use 03. I currently have one already set up on this machine. So we just double click on the VMX and that will open up um, the VMware workstation software here. And what I'm going to do first, we're going to go walk through um, editing the VSA, but I'm going to edit and upgrade the, um, the hardware version or the virtual machine hardware version of the VSA so that it's current with the version of workstation I'm using. I'm just going to alter this one hit finish this is a real quick process and then I'm going to edit the virtual machine and change the uh, the network As you can see it it puts in the VM network which you typically see in, uh, in a vSphere or VI3 uh, configuration. We're going to change that to bridge and from there we can just click OK. Now there are some other uh, settings we want to do but uh, for adding disk but we're going to wait until we power the machine on and configure the IP address. So let's power the machine on Now once you come up to the fully booted VSA, you just type start, and hit enter. You want to click enter to log in. And the only thing we're going to change is the network settings in here. So you just scroll to it, click enter, select the, the network adapter, and we change the name. And do HP VSA03. And then I'm going to change this to DACP, but of course in a production setup, you, you more than likely want to use a dedicated IP address so that it doesn't change on you. I'm going to click OK, OK. 
we'll go ahead and grab an IP address and we're done here so we're just gonna back out So the next part we're going to add the storage. I'm going to add two disks, hard disks in here. Uh, we're going to set this up for independent and persistent. I'm going to use 100 gigs just because that's what I've used in the other VSA. I'm not going to allocate all the disks right now. Uh, because it would take a, a little while to create that. So for the sake of time I'm just going to use the thin disk and we'll finish. Now set up one more Now once those are configured we have to set up the, the SCSI IDs on these and we're going to have to go ahead and choose uh, SCSI 1, 0 for the first one and then the second one we're just going to choose the next uh, num number 1, 1. This is required for um, the VSA to actually see the disk so if you forget this step you're, you're more than likely not going to see your storage when you boot this up or, or restart this so now um, you're going to need to have the central management console I already have this installed but if you do not you will have to install it it's a simple installation you can see I currently have a couple VSAs already set up. You'll just need to find the, the new one. I have the subnet. I'm going to do it by subnet. Hit find. And voila. It found the new one that I set up. You can click close. You see it's newly found. When we go to available nodes section we can see that there's actually a, a warning indicator on the storage now right now that you can see is red over here uh, because the status is off or removed so even if you click the reconfigure raid this will not have an effect because it does not actually see the disk that we just added so we're going to have to to restart. We're going to restart the uh, VSA, and once the VSA is restarted, uh, it'll recognize those disks that we added in there, and um, we'll need to come back in here and and reconfigure the RAID. So we're going to reboot. Okay. Um, now that the virtual SAN appliance has rebooted we're going to find it again using the subnet option and once in there we'll see we still have the caution light but if we look in the storage area here we can actually see the two disks and they're just inactive but the health is normal so we're going to reconfigure the RAID and choose virtual RAID and now we can see that the status of our disk is active and everything is normal so basically that is it um, you can go through and look look at some of the settings here if you want we can now add this to an existing management group uh, we can just select which one we want you can see I have two in here 
if I want to add it to the local we just select the local group and add so that's it uh, again Anton over at thehyperadvisor.com come and check out my blog bye